Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. This is Rich. Welcome back to Rich Aesthetic. And today I got an Aesthetic Apps episode for you covering my take on the Liftin Workout Tracker app. In my opinion, it's the best workout tracker for those of you out there doing stuff like uh, bodybuilding or power lifting, yeah, strength training, that type of stuff. Um, I've been using, I've used qu quite a few different uh, workout tracking apps and the type of apps I'm talking about are like if you have a routine where you're typically going in doing the same type of lifts, maybe the big three for example, um, a squat, deadlift, and bench, and you just want to track what you lifted, the weights you lifted, the reps, maybe you want to do some RPE tracking, um, and then you're doing some accessories, right? That's the type of workout trackers I'm talking about here today. So, welcome back. This is our fifth episode of Aesthetic Apps, and let's jump straight into this. All right, the different apps that I've used, Liftin is the most recent one. I used Taurus a little bit, but that was quite a while ago, and I was just looking through the app, and it has changed quite a bit. Um, and then I also have used Strong. Now, Strong I've used the most, like, over seven or eight hundred times i'm not able to get my history to low but believe me i've been grandfathered in so i'm one of like the og users because they're a subscription now but i bought the app for six dollars back before subscriptions were really a thing you can see that here um but then most recently i've been using lifting and i've got 170 something workouts logged there so i pretty much have just been using that for the last few months I'm going to get into differentiating features for Lifton here in a second, but I was looking at all their release notes. Lifton's getting updates about two to three, every two to three months. Taurus is a little bit slower. And then Strong, they're getting a lot of updates, but it's, it's all fixes and bug fixes. Like the last notable feature added was 10 or 11 months ago. Yeah, 10 months ago. And it's just the fact that you can change the... the your start date for the history so you can like see okay what's my one rep max in the last 10 months instead of what's my lifetime one rep max because you know covid messed up a lot of our stats <laughs> so yeah anyways take that for what you will so last couple things on the general overview here um so lifting you're able to put in different workout plans and then in that plan you can have different routines and you can even have these routines by week I think that's pretty cool. Now that's pretty much the same as a lot of different workout trackers like Strong. Um, you can have different plans, they're just called folders. Um, and then you have different routines in there. And then Taurus, I'm not really sure. I know you can have different routines. I'm not sure about the extent though. So yeah, um, and then all three of these apps of course have your progress charts and stuff for different exercises. And you can filter these by volume, maxes, and then like the most weight you lifted, the highest like uh, set you've had. You can filter these charts in those different ways. It all depends on what it is that you need. All right, now I wanna get into differentiating features for lifting specifically. So the first one, I've already mentioned this, but you can have routines by week. I think that is awesome. I recently bought Jeff Nippard's Power Building Systems Workout Plan 2.0 of what? That must have been 14, 15 weeks ago. And I put in, now it was a lot of work, but I put in all 10 weeks of that Power Building System. You can see here, I have two left. My dumbass decided to get acute bronchitis. <coughs> wow, I'm still coughing, great you know, a few weeks ago and it basically knocked me out. Um, so I haven't been to the gym in weeks. So that's why I'm probably looking a little bit fatter. Not that I was thin before, but anyway, so you can have that. And that's, I think that's really cool having it by week, at least in this, for this specific workout plan. Um, and then here's the other thing though, that's really cool. You can link exercises through routines. So like, if I'm doing the same type of exercise every other week, I can link that exercise just with its corresponding weeks that I want it to be linked in. All right, the next differentiating feature are warm-up calculators. Now you can have custom ones. Now Strong has this too, but you don't have as much control. In Lifting, you can have it based off of just weights. You want it to be the same weight, incrementing every single set. You can have as many sets as you want. You know, so you're going up 20 pounds every single set. 
um, whatever it is you want, you can put that in. You can also have it just percentage based and then have it be like linear. So like it goes up a certain percent and then like this, the actual reps that you do is just a linear progression uh, down actually. You start with high reps, go down. Um, or you could have it be like on an S curve. So that just means like you'll, you'll have maybe quite a few reps at the beginning and then there's bigger gaps in between the how many like reps you're going so it's going down right so let's see you start at 20 then it jumps to 12 so you've just gone down eight reps in that warm-up set and then maybe you go 12 to eight so this time you didn't go down eight reps you only went down four reps so then you go from eight to six and you see it's only been two reps this time and then that's the way the s curve one works so that's really great because like everyone has different styles of warming up you should pick the best style for you. So lifting allows you to do that. All right, next thing, you have an equipment list. You can put in the exercises, sorry, the equipment that you have access to in your gym or even at home, but it's more so when you customize what the exercise variation is that you're doing. I also find it helpful for things when like, let's say the gym has a seven and a half kilogram easy bark, easy uh, easy curl bar <coughs> right at seven and a half kilogram versus let's say like a 10 or a five kilogram but yeah you can put that in um, and then you can edit the exercises equipment the default equipment that you're always running with so that way the base weight is the correct weight for you because two and a half kilograms does make a difference plus like it just it all depends with how accurate you want to be for your statistics and what you're tracking so all right so that brings me to like missing features in my wish list. So one, I wish Lifton had more widget options. I think the developer could be a lot more creative. And um, one thing that I love, which strong workout tracker has totally pissed me off, but they only have a widget for workouts per week. I don't give a fucking shit if I did four workouts this week or five workouts this week. I've already done them, right? I'm thinking about the future, what's next? So Lifton has a really cool widget that shows you you're up next workouts yeah love that here's the thing though those are the only widgets that Lifton has i wish they also had options maybe i want to see a chart of my big three maybe i want to have a stacked widget right like a medium-sized up next widget followed by three exercise widgets per se the big three squat deadlift and bench maybe i want those there just for quick access so i can see how my one rep max has been or my volume has been whatever you should be able to set that in the widget parameters so another missing feature or wish list in this case is not a missing feature but i wish there was an ipad app and that then would also run with catalyst hopefully on the mac now why it's not because i want to work out in the gym with an ipad although with the ipad mini i think that'd be kind of cool um but no this is specifically for having a better editing screen. I like to see the workout routine kind of like shortcuts, right? Like a little bit larger screen so I can just kind of mess with the exercises more and not have to tap in and out of views. Cause like on the iPhone screen, you go into a view, you want to edit something, you tap in and it goes into another view. Um, on the iPad, I think you could just tap on things like on like the left side and then on the right side, you'd have the editor for that or the inspector for that specific exercise. I just think like with an iPad app, the developer could give us more uh, flexibility and control over how we edit our routines. Then the last thing for my wish list, which would be in my opinion, is kind of a missing feature, but faster sync with Apple Watch. So Lifting does have an Apple Watch app. I love it. That's how I run all my workouts. I just have it on my Apple Watch. Um, you can make changes quick enough, you know, like maybe you're changing the weight or the amount of reps you're doing. That all works fast enough and things. But changing exercises, it takes some setup. You have to make sure you have alternate uh, exercises already logged for the exercise. So like, how does that work? You can see here on the overlay, um, I'm doing some bicep curls. Well, maybe today I want to do incline curls. That's a separate exercise, right? You get, it hits different different angle, different way you're holding the dumbbells, or a little bit maybe flared out a little bit more, allowing you to get that, the peak of your bicep really pumped there and whatnot. That all, that's that's different. So you have to all set, you have to have that set up in the, in the phone already when you go to the exercise editor. I'd like to be able to do that 
when I'm in the middle of a workout though. Because like for you new for new users, this is more important, right? For me, I've had a lot of experience with the app now. Stuff is usually already pretty set up. But every once in a while I do run into an exercise where I don't have any alternative exercises set up yet because I haven't used it yet. Maybe I'm trying a new thing. So then I find myself on the watch, oh, I can't do the variation of this. So I do it on my phone, but it's not showing up on the routine on the watch. But yeah, lifting just gives a lot more, I think, power user features for like technical type of calculations with the, the whole equipment thing, the warm up calculator, and having even those alternative exercises already set up. So yeah. All right, that brings me to the very, very last thing. I made a one rep max calculator. Now, no, I didn't make up my own formulas. I found them all online and I made this shortcut. Now this shortcut link is down in the description. If you're not using shortcuts, this might be a cool introduction for you, but essentially when you download it to your phone and you add it, there's a couple customization options. Obviously we're all using different units. So you just delete the unit that you don't want to use, right? So in my case, I only have kilograms. I deleted the pounds. You'll do whatever you want to do for your case. Then the next question will be for you to delete all the calculators that you don't want to use. So there's only one left. But anyway, so I use the Epley formula. I just think it's modest. It's not, it's not overestimating and I don't think it's underestimating, right? So like the last thing I did was 85, a set of 85 kilograms on bench and I did it for reps of five, five reps. And the estimation for the Epley calculator, as you can see here, is that I could do maybe 99 kilograms for my one rep max. It's almost two plates. I'm trying to get to 100 kilograms. It's 225 pounds about-ish. I made this calculator because I don't like going into the app to have to calculate it, right? With this calculator, I can now calculate it from anywhere in the system because I use assistive touch, pulls up the search, I can just search the calculator and boom. And it doesn't mess with my stats because I don't want to update the estimated one rep max chart in the lifting app. I just wanted to use a regular one rep max that I've actually done in the gym. So anyways, that's down there for you. It took me a little bit over an hour to create. So hopefully you guys get some use from that. Again, thanks so much for watching the video. I do hope you agree with me on my take for the best workout tracker. If you don't, leave a comment down below. Let's have a conversation. I wanna know what workout trackers you use and why. Maybe I need to learn about some different apps that I haven't come across. If any of you use Strong or Tauros, let me know what you think of Tauros and Strong. Let me know your take on that. I don't think the developers have been really that active in adding new features. I've been asking for iPad version for years for Strong. And I've got over 800 workouts there. So yeah, subscribe to the channel if you like more videos like this. Also go ahead and share this video with your friends, all your gym nerds who are out there. You know who you're talking about. You know who I'm talking about. I'm a gym nerd. So you like tech and you like working out. You want to fuse the two, share with those people. Again, thanks so much. Wrist Aesthetic out. Ciao.